Waking up never sounded so good. Embarrass your medical mumbo jumbo. Hello. Welcome in to Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. Oh my. News, weather, sports, and of course all the local info you need to start your day. Is that a real show? No, it's somebody's making a joke. Forget it. Talk of the Town on 103.7 WTIB, 94.1 WNBU, Cable 7 in Greenville. And now, listen or watch live at WTIBFM.com. Everybody still awake? All right, big finish. Now Here's your host for Talking to the Town, Henry Hinton. Hey now, welcome in everybody. It is uh, Wednesday morning, December 20th. We're edging ever so close. We're inching, inching and edging ever so close to uh, the uh, Christmas uh, weekend. And uh, a little rainy out there today. If you got to travel today like I do, be careful. We're having, uh, we're having our annual Christmas luncheon today for our staff down in Newburn, Moorhead, and uh, in Jacksonville. So we're going to be down there today, having a little lunch in Newburn. Look forward to seeing some of my friends in Newburn. Might be traveling down to the coast after that, McGee. Might make a little run down to Emerald Isle this afternoon. Might as well check on things. But you know, here's the thing: it's going to be raining all afternoon. I got some folks I need to see down there, but uh, yeah, yeah, it might be clearing out a little bit by that time. You think? By the way, I did not acknowledge that yesterday was a red letter day here on the program. Um, I bring breakfast in for everybody in the building a couple days a week. I always try to do it when Weaver's here because, you know, you Weaver's do. special. special. He is. He's special. Special Ed. And I brought bagels this morning. How were the bagels? Wonderful. Good. Very good. good. Yesterday, McGee brought breakfast in for everybody from McDonald's. Not looking for acknowledgement? Wow. I just wanted to return the favor. No, you only did it because I called you out last week. Because I see you were, you were <laughs> complaining about me not bringing anything. I'm like, when did you ever bring something? So then you brought something yesterday. and then it, But, of course, I had already eaten. So, you know, if it, give me a little earlier heads up there, and I won't stuff my face at the greasy spoon before I get over here. Well, huh? Now, but I, but now, I, now hey, you look, just called me out for my reason of getting breakfast. I know. I'm just. I thought it was a nice gesture. It was. It was. An, <laughs> it, it, was it was in the season of giving that you brought the bo- the, uh, nah, the, the look, McDonald's. Nah, look. None of us. No one else here at the station ever brings anything in. Ever. Ever has. In all the years I've been here, only you do that. So it's you know it's the least we can do. At least one morning to return the favor. I yeah. spent seven dollars. A whopping seven dollars. Seven dollars broke wow. the bank. Right. Seven. Bucks. You got those dollar sausage biscuits, didn't you? I did. I did. How do they do it so cheap? I don't know. They're not How bad. do they do it? That's a pretty good deal. It's a good deal. All right, eight minutes after eight, uh, Governor Pat McCrory is going to join us on the telephone. Our former governor is now a radio star. Video kill the radio I star. I was about to say the same <laughs> thing. He is now doing his own radio talk show in Charlotte on WBT, and he goes on the air at 9. So, Michael, we, we got to get him on a little early. We said he's going to be on at 8.30. But he's going to be on at 8.15. So, Governor Pat McCrory, I wanted to get uh, Pat on to talk about the Panthers because he's been so involved in the Panthers from the get-go. Of course, as Mayor of Charlotte, he had to do some negotiating. And as governor, you might remember he had to do some negotiating. I think he was governor when Jerry Richardson came in and demanded new stuff at the stadium over there. Yeah, believe he was too. And McCrory was quoted yesterday in the Wall Street Journal as saying that the sale of the Charlotte Panthers, the Carolina Panthers, could bring about some really bad stuff for the pan. For, you know, if you love the Panthers in North Carolina, because you know, if um, somebody wants to buy it and move it to St. Louis, or that would be a possibility. What I mean, but St. Louis oh, lost yeah. the Rams, yeah. and so I wonder what he thinks about. Diddy. But you know, here's the thing: why would why would a, why would somebody want to move it from Charlotte to St. Louis when St. Louis was doing so poorly with it? Incentives. They they look like you had mentioned earlier. If if a owner comes in and says, okay, well, I don't like uh, that my stadium's not one of the best in the NFL. And St. Louis says, hey, we'll build you a state-of-the-art uh, NFL stadium that rivals uh, the Dallas Cowboys. Then that's an incentive. Yeah. And how serious. So he, and, and that's one of the things that, the, that, that, that McCrory said in the Wall Street Journal article yesterday is, you know, a new owner could come in and say, well, I'm, if you don't build me a new stadium, I'm going to move from Charlotte. Right? Could happen, yeah. And, I mean, I, I know we joked about the the Sean Combs, the Diddy, Kaepernick deal, but reports are they're working hard 
talking to business investors, and I mean, they can get the money they need. They can to, work as hard as they want to. They'll never get approved by the NFL. I yeah. hope you're right. I don't want to see it happen. I'm just saying they can do what they need to do to get the money they need to get it, which I think it's going to go. The team will go for more than two and a half billion. I was I was going to say I, I don't, I don't uh, and I, I put this on Twitter the other day. I just don't under I don't think some of these these guys that are interested, so called interested in buying the Panthers realize just how much money two point five billion dollars is. And and I got this question last night. Maybe when but you, you know it's gonna turn into a big racial thing. There's gonna be a big race thing and then the NFL and and you know, that scares me a little bit because you know, you never know what Goodell's gonna do. Yeah, it, but he they can have make a it a race Goodell thing all they want, but it's the bottom line is the bottom line. It comes down to money. If you've got the money to buy the I mean, you you can't walk into Walmart and just because you don't have twenty dollars on you to buy a twenty dollar item, you can't scream race and they give it to you for ten. I know we got yeah, to but you understand but, what I'm but, saying. But, but but that's not that's not a national treasure. It's not a national I mean, I, sport. I, you know? I I get it. What about the the other investors with the Panthers? Is it a contractual deal to where Richardson has the right? I guess being the majority owner to sell the team, do they not have any say so yeah, in how I that think goes that's, down? I think is that that's how that the works? way it is. I think majority I know, owner. You know, well, let's do this. Let's get a break in and we'll get the governor on the phone because he knows more about this than we do. He's he was involved in negotiations with the Panthers for years, and um, he knows Jerry Richardson well, and he knows the players and and I, I mean the people who are going to be involved. That's what I mean by players. He also knows some of the actual players, but. But uh, let's get Governor Pat McCrory on next to talk about this. And we'll be right back with uh, Pat McCrory. Stay with us. We're not just introducing the 2018 Toyotas. We're reducing them. It's the introduction reduction at Greenville Toyota. 2018 Corollas, $149 a month. 2018 Camrys, $169 a month. Hurry to Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. incredible things were born in the Carolinas, like barbecue. Born right here, baby. First in flight. Maybe you've heard of it. Mini golf. Boom. And a few of my favorites, the Panthers and Pepsi. Born in the Carolinas. The touchdown dance. Perfected in the Carolinas. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752 8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamston, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. My prescription refills. My son shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents care. My chart. Vident My Chart. Vident MyChart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidentMyChart.com or call 1-855-MYVIDENT to learn how you can sign up. Why settle for a 2017 model when you can have massive reductions on a 2018 Toyota? It's the introduction reduction at Greenville Toyota. 2018 RAV4s, $179 a month. Plus, get our advantage at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money.
Talk of the Town at 815. Welcome back. It is uh, Wednesday morning, and uh, we've got McGee and Billy Weaver in the studio. And now on the telephone, the former governor of the great state of North Carolina, who has now turned radio star. He has his own radio show now every day at 9 a.m. on WBT in Charlotte, uh, Governor Pat McCrory. Good morning, uh, Governor McCrory. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Could, could you not find the current governor to go on the air with you? And, and you have to have your second choice, Pat McCrory, the former governor. Well, here's the thing. Uh, can you not find another job and not encroach on my on my area? I mean, you know, I'm afraid you know, you're going to take this over, is man. going to be a big show. <laughs> I actually, big show. I, I have just, not heard of you on WBT steal, yet, but I'm, I'm here. I'm getting great your, reports. I'm stealing your format, your agenda, your personality. <laughs> And pretending I invented it, just like I did as governor. <laughs> yeah. Well, my son Hank, who you know, and uh, was in Charlotte for the game, and he spent Sunday night. He told me he was driving back Monday morning and listened to your show on WBT. And I said, "Well, how was it?" And he said, "Pat is great on the radio." And I went, "Damn it!" <laughs> <laughs> That's the selfish Henry hit nine, though. <laughs> no, we knew you'd be great. We knew you'd be great. Are you enjoying doing the radio show? I, I have enjoyed it. I have not made, even though BT is right now promoting it as though I've started a new show. I've done it for two months, and the ratings are doing real well, but I haven't determined whether I want to keep doing it or not. And I'll make that decision during the, uh, during the holidays as I negotiate for green jelly beans in my <laughs> green room. <laughs> You know, you know, no uh, red, you know, this no sounds like this, this sounds like, like that, a theme so. with you. We ask you what you're going to do, and you say, "Well, I haven't decided yet." You know, <laughs> <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is a theme you with you, Governor. Reach me. What's that? At least you can reach me and get me by <laughs> phone to tell you I haven't decided versus some other people that you can't reach. Yeah. Well, here's the real reason I wanted to get you on. Is there any truth that you're going to be part of the investment team with Diddy? To buy the Panthers? There is. <laughs> that is absolutely true, and I've made it. that decision to go with uh, Diddy and, and Colin Kaepernick, too. He's going to be a, <laughs> he's a personal, a close friend of mine. I'm going to start wearing my hair like he does and, and <laughs> kneeling for the national anthem. You guys will start every, uh, every meeting with a pledge of allegiance to the flag, I'm sure. If he's I'm not there. sure which flag. That's going to be the <laughs> exactly. debate within the ownership team. Exactly. Well, let's talk about um, the the happenings over there. You you uh, having been the governor for what sixteen years, and, I mean the mayor mayor for sixteen years, and then governor after that. Uh, you've had to deal with a lot of these issues that have popped up with uh, Jerry Richardson wanting improvements at the stadium. I know you were also uh, deep deeply involved. Uh, you and we were talking about our friend Ron Kimball who was uh, on your staff there mm -hmm. in Charlotte, uh, who's our friend who was the former, uh, uh, my former neighbor and uh, general, uh, the uh, city manager of Greenville. Ron's been involved. You, you guys had to deal with the Hornets as well. You've got a lot of experience in dealing with this stuff. And uh, I, I, the first question I would ask you first, you know, were you surprised by all the allegations against Jerry Richardson? Because you know the man. I was not surprised by how tough a boss he is and how he can be very intimidating. I was surprised by the sexual allegations directed toward him. That's what surprised me. I've had to deal with Jerry as both a mayor and a governor. In fact, most people don't realize that as governor in my first year of office, Jerry came to the governor's office with a group of uh, people. And um, <clears throat> how can I put this light? He asked uh, for money from the state for improvements to the football stadium in Charlotte. And I respectfully told him, um, Jerry, I, I like the Panthers. I helped support the Panthers when I was mayor. But I've got a $2 billion deficit. I've got hundreds of million dollars in Medicaid problems. I've got no teacher pay raises. Uh, the state's a mess, and there's no way I, I'm going to give money to, uh, to improve a, a football stadium. And he did not like my answer. Yeah. And, uh, well, I and mean, he can he's... be extremely tough in in his responses and uh in dealing with him and i had to do that as mayor too at times so i've seen his business personality it is uh, pretty strong yeah 
Uh, and I, I don't know him on that to level. Put it mildly. I have, yeah, I, but I, I have had some dealings with him, and he is uh, he he's a he's he's a pretty intimidating cat. <laughs> yeah, he uses his size and his body. Yeah, um, his physical right. presence in his negotiations, and um, but you know, some people have to stand up and say no, and that's what I did. Uh, I don't think it ever made it to the media, but those are the, some of the tough decisions I had to make during my first year in the, in the governor's office. It'll be interesting in the future if with new ownership um, that comes and is most likely going to be in debt, if they come and ask the state and other government entities for money, and what would uh, Roy Cooper's response be or, or state legislators, uh, Republican state legislators' response? Yeah, because th- things are a little different now. The economy's good, and of course, uh, people uh, around your region of the state down there in Charlotte, they don't want to lose the Panthers. And I, I read the article yesterday in the Wall Street Journal where you were quoted, uh, in um, talking about a new owner, what could potentially happen. I mean, you you negotiated with the Hornets, and you know they kept asking for stuff that you wouldn't give them, and they left they left town. So are, are you concerned about that with a, a new ownership coming in? And then we'll talk about who you think the new owners might be. Yeah, uh, I am concerned, but that's business. Yeah. I mean, we've had people come and go in North Carolina. We've had mergers and acquisitions. And hate to tell you, but most of them make decisions based upon money yeah. and finance and right. how the numbers work. And, uh, you know, there was a certain line in the sand I had to draw with the Hornets back when – I don't know, my second or third term as mayor back in the 90s, and the owner did not like me at that point in time and saying no to him. On other items, I said yes to him, but I had to draw the line in the sand like I did with some businesses in North Carolina when I was a governor. If you don't have a line, if you don't understand your return on investment, um, then you're not a good leader. Now, in saying no, I call some enemies, including here in Charlotte. Um, but, you know, then I was part of a group that got the uh, – the Hornets back yeah. four or five years later. Right. So uh, I've had to deal with these owners, and they've got a very similar MO. They're men of uh, primarily men born in the 30s or 40s, uh, even 20s, uh, who are have big egos, uh, are visionary, are successful business people, and know they have a, a product that communities want. And uh, they play on that to communities, and often they use communities as uh, – um, fodder, yeah. uh, column fodder to compete against each other, and I anticipate that happening in the upcoming year. All right, so uh, Forbes.com has listed a group of people, um, a, a, <clears throat> a list of people that they think would be potential suitors on this, and I got uh, Trent and Billy, both sports guys in here. Guys, you guys are welcome to, uh, to weigh in on this. I don't know if you've seen this, but they list a bunch of uh, – uh, people like the Belk family there in Charlotte, uh, the Levine family, which owns uh, Family Dollar and uh, is headquartered there in the Charlotte area. And then uh, here in Rocky Mount, you've got Steve and Jerry Wordsworth, the former uh, Meadowbrook Meat Company folks, who are the uh, biggest minority share. Other than Jerry Richardson, they own more of the team than anybody else. They own 16%. Uh, and, of course, I think any of those three scenarios would be positive to, for for the Panthers and, and for making sure that they stay in Charlotte. Do you agree? Yes, I do agree. Uh, Steve and Jerry uh, are just fantastic individuals. I got to know his governor very well. They're very underneath the radar screen. And all those individuals you mentioned are extremely wealthy. But just because you're extremely wealthy doesn't mean you can get your hands on a lot of cash immediately. Because in doing so, they'd have, they have—they don't just have cash sitting in a bank. They'd probably have to get rid of some of their investments, which they'd have to pay taxes on. Some may have to borrow money to make up the difference and find a borrower and go in debt. And um, so just because you're wealthy doesn't mean you have access to cash. You're wealthy on paper. I have this problem, Henry. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> I know you do. Well, there are some people in the state of North Carolina, and Forbes uh, lists them as well. Bruton Smith, who, uh, who is the uh, chairman of uh, the, the, the Speedway over there in, uh, in Concord. Um, uh, Jim Goodnight, of course, uh, is the richest man in the state of North Carolina. They list now, his- Goodnight, 
might not have problems getting access to capital, and neither would uh, the head of Amazon. Yeah, yeah, Be- uh, Be- uh, Bezos. Uh, but of In course, fact, I have a theory uh, that I'll put out there that you know Amazon's looking at North Carolina. They're, of course, they're asking for incentives and tax right, breaks out right. of this world, which. Um, our governor, current governor, says he was against tax breaks for the wealthy, but I think he's offering some about every day to uh, companies at this point in time in Hollywood. But interesting, a, a, a unique deal would be, okay, you come to North Carolina and also buy the football team. Yeah, I hadn't thought about yeah, he's that. he's worth like, what, $50 billion? Yeah, we were talking about uh, Jim Goodnight yesterday, and, of course, uh, as, as you know, I, I served on a board with his wife, Ann, and uh, they're great people, but I don't see them as NFL people you know they're 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 into the arts and they're into uh into uh, art collections and things like that I've never known Jim Goodnight to be a big sports fan have you no yeah so well, I don't, he likes I, golf yeah he actually he likes golf a lot he has his own golf tournament well he bought he Preston with country a club too. Golf tournament. yeah I was living That's, at Preston I don't when know he came about his other love of sports <laughs> yeah Part of the dilemma, though, too, is you're not putting in the factors. I think there's going to be a great deal of pressure on the NFL to have minority ownership or female ownership. Well, that's the other thing that, uh, you know, this whole Diddy thing, I think it started kind of as, uh, you know, this the, the rapper uh, uh, Diddy, Sean Combs, uh, who, who came out and said he wanted to buy the team. But it looked like a social statement at first saying, you know, I want to, I want to buy the Panthers and make Kaepernick my quarterback. But now – you're hearing that he's actually trying to put together investors. I mean, is, you know, it, is, it, is that going to become a, a, a is that going to be a, a big political thing? Absolutely, it'll <laughs> no doubt about it. And, and some have written me and said, "Oh, that's just a PR stunt." I responded back, "Well, a lot of people thought Trump was a PR stunt <laughs> when he announced." They both thrive on their name and promoting their name, but that name has brought them to become very wealthy people. Yeah, And uh, the only downside uh, to him, Sean Combs, or Diddy as he calls himself this year, is uh, by pulling in Colin Kaepernick as a part of the ownership group would be extremely controversial, especially here in North Carolina. This is a guy who wore pigs on his socks, yeah. grading police officers. I can't and see the – I, I, not... I cannot see the NFL ever uh, allowing that to happen. Yeah, I, I don't think that Kaepernick is, is being called in as part of an owner. He just he said that he wanted to sign Kaepernick. No, he's, uh, Kaepernick no. is saying he wants to be part no. of the ownership. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, yeah, yesterday. Yeah. He's that, talking yeah. about ownership, and so yeah. is Stephen Curry. Yeah, well, Stephen yeah, Steph Curry, Curry, I know, had put yeah. his hat in the ring. What, so what, about, is, what about Michael Jordan? What, do, what do you think about that? possibility. That might be the fallback. Um, you know, Jordan, of course, owns the Charlotte Hornets. Um, I would be shocked if Jordan isn't a part of a local ownership group to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, maybe not the lead. So guy. that's what I'm, I'm, I'm wondering. Could, there could has you... to be one lead person. Yeah. Selected who owns 30 percent of the team. That's the NFL rules. And the the real issue will be who will be the lead person and who will be the minority owners. When I say minority owners, I'm talking financially. Here's so an, there's here, a, I'm sure a lot of politics on the teams being put together. Here's another name that Forbes.com dropped yesterday. Mark Cuban. He has said no. He already said no? He said the NFL is not a good business model. He thinks the, uh, the product is on the downswing due to concussions, due to other factors, ratings. Uh, so he, he And by the way, that's a fair question to ask about maybe the NFL – has too high a value at this point in time with the uh, current trend. So uh, Mark yeah, you Cuban saw you saw no, the, you saw the Buffalo Bills model. sold for more than their value, but you know with everything happening, all the negative stuff happening with the NFL right now, you know you wonder if the Panthers will sell for more than their value. Well, that's what is, I was going to ask you. Uh, do you think at the end of the day, when the sale is is final? Will they sell for that estimated two point three billion, or will it be higher? What do you think that final number might be? Well, let me let me give you an answer by quoting an unnamed former owner of a of a franchise or a minority owner, and he said um, the value in these teams is the incre- the increase of the value 
the escalation of the value. And the only reason for the escalation of the value is not the actual return on investment on operating, but the ego of a new billionaire who wants to buy a team, whether yeah. it be in the NBA <laughs> or the right. NFL. Yeah. He says it has nothing to do with business. It has to do with someone's ego who wants to have a presence in a community or in the nation, and that's a very elite club to be a part of. And if you can afford to be a part of that elite club and then 10 years down the road find another guy who has a big ego, yeah. it's a pretty good deal. And if you look at the owners in the NFL, that's kind of been – How's that theory? That's kind of been exactly what's happened over the years. Well, you know, uh, we the got the numbers don't make sense. Even yeah. in the NBA, most of the right. NBA owners are not making money. Yeah. Uh, we got to run, but I will offer one final theory and see what you think about this. Since uh, Steve, well, you know, I've got a, I've got a radio show to go to. That, you know, <laughs> yeah. exactly. I don't you wanna, have, you I have don't to make you late. Uh, I, I, uh, if the Wordsworths own sixteen percent already. So let's say that they were to go ahead and buy the uh, the additional fourteen percent to become the 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 managing partners, uh, and then you put together all these other people. You put together Jim Goodnight and the Belt family and the Levine family and Michael Jordan and all those people, and then you'd have a pretty good North Carolina ownership uh, group. Uh, that's the best. That's that's the best case scenario. I'd love for that to happen. Yeah, yeah. I would love for that to happen. I think the People in the Carolinas and Charlotte would love to have that happen. Can you and see Wordsworth, Steve Wordsworth doing that, though? You know, he's very under the radar screen. He's just a great guy. He's actually my age. Um, he's around 60, 61 years old, yeah. uh, maybe even younger at this point in time. Um, so, yeah, and he's got a son who could be a successor. Right. So it, yeah. I think it, I just don't know how much the money's tied up. Yeah. Um, yeah, so actually, it, it, his son is actually uh, a member of Greenville Country Club, and I've played golf with him a few times. He lives, well, that, he, he lives here in Greenville. He's a member of a very exclusive, wealthy club that you're a member of. I've been to that club. That's where the elite, that's where the elite of uh, Greenville goes. By the way, before I hang up, yeah. what the heck? East Carolina lost to UNC Charlotte the day after we fired our coach. Bad connection. Got to go, Governor. What the heck? <laughs> We're losing you, Governor. Bad cell connection. <laughs> We're just not going to talk to you about ECU sports right now. Let me say this. When you were governor, ECU was a lot better at football and basketball. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Isn't uh, that the truth? We're coming back. Today's signing day. We're coming. Today's the day we're coming back. Thank you, Governor. You take care. All right. Uh, good luck with your show today. Won't be as good as ours, but good luck. Uh, governor Pat McCrory. <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy, man. He's just such a cool guy. You're breaking he? up. I can't. So, <laughs> I can't make out what you're saying. Seven thirty-three. Go. Let's go to break. We're coming back. It's twenty-seven in front of nine o'clock. Be right back. All 2017 inventory must go here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. This is commercial truck season. Come see our great lineup of Ram commercial vehicles for all your work needs. Check out the Ram 2500, Ram 3500 with cab and chassis, Ram 4500 and 5500. Also Ram Promaster and Ram Promaster City. All 2017 Rams must go during Ram Power Day. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. Some pretty incredible things were born in the Carolinas, like barbecue. Born right here, baby. First in flight. Maybe you've heard of it. Mini golf. Boom. And a few of my favorites, the Panthers and Pepsi. Born in the Carolinas. The touchdown dance. Perfected in the Carolinas.
my prescription refills. My son shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents care. My chart. Vident My Chart. Vident My Chart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidentMyChart.com or call 1 855 MyVident to learn how you can sign up. Welcome in to the new Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Are you ready to drive a little to save a lot? I'm Rod Emery, General Manager at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Come see us here in Washington for the best deal on a new car, truck, or Jeep and a great sales and service experience. Lease a new Ram Crew Cab truck for just $299 a month and only $299 due at signing during our Drive and Discover event. We're looking forward to seeing you at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, located on Highway 264 in between Greenville and Washington. Or visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com. It's the most wonderful time. Okay, it is time for a news update here on the show. Thanks to Governor Pat McCrory for being on with us. That was fun as always. Uh, let's go to uh, Billy Weaver now at the uh, WITN News Desk. Good morning, Weave. Good morning, Henry. It's currently 836, 55 degrees in Greenville. I'm Billy Weaver, and this is a look at your WITN News headlines. Republicans have pushed to the verge one of the most sweeping rewrites of the nation's tax laws in more than three decades. A deeply unpopular bill they insist Americans will learn to love when they see their paychecks next year. President Donald Trump cheered the lawmakers on, eager to claim his first major legislative victory. The Senate narrowly passed the legislation on the party line 51-48 vote early Wednesday. Protesters interrupted with chants of kill the bill, don't kill us. And Vice President Mike Pence repeatedly called for order. Upon passage, Republicans cheered. Senator Ma Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell told his colleagues, if we can't sell this to the American people, we ought to go into another line of work. Governor Roy Cooper has announced that 800 new jobs are coming to eastern North Carolina with the opening of a new manufacturing plant. The governor was at Edgecombe Community College Tuesday for the second time in less than a week, making a major announcement about plans for the Triangle Tire to open its first international manufacturing plant there. With more than $150 million in combined incentives from the state and county, this is the largest investment in a rural county in state history. The new plant for the Chinese manufacturer of passenger and commercial tires should create 800 new jobs in the area. The governor says the real key to these jobs is that they are skilled jobs. The company expects each should pay an average of around $56,000 a year and will require special training and education that could be provided by Edgecombe Community College. The first phase of construction will focus on passenger tires, which will begin in 2019. The plant should be fully operational. By 2020. It is currently 838, 55 degrees in Greenville. I'm Billy Weaver, and that's a look at your WITN news headlines. It is Henry. 55, and we're going to be dropping to 48 later this afternoon and rain today and tonight. Back to 51 tomorrow, and then on Friday, we got sunshine and 56. All right, it's 838. More talk of the town for Wednesday morning, December 20th, coming up. Next, we're going to meet a, uh, well, we're going to have an interesting interview here. The new year's coming, and uh, it's time to start thinking about getting in shape. Give you some options on that when we come back. We're not just introducing the 2018 Toyotas, we're reducing them. It's the introduction reduction at Greenville Toyota. 2018 Corollas, $149 a month. 2018 Camrys, $169 a month. Hurry to Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. Some pretty incredible things were born in the Carolinas, like barbecue. Born right here, baby. First to flight. Maybe you've heard of it. Mini golf. Boom. And a few of my favorites, the Panthers and Pepsi. Born in the Carolinas. The touchdown dance, perfected in the Carolinas. U.S. Cellular put towers where most others don't. So people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here. Or catch the game live way over here. Isn't that what you pay for? A stronger signal in the middle of anywhere. Visit Real Wireless, your local U.S. cellular authorized agent in Ohoski, Williamston, and Windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere. 
all 2017 inventory must go here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. This is commercial truck season. Come see our great lineup of Ram commercial vehicles for all your work needs. Check out the Ram 2500, Ram 3500 with cab and chassis, Ram 4500 and 5500. Also Ram Promaster and Ram Promaster City. All 2017 Rams must go during Ram Power Days. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. My prescription refills. My son shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents' care. My chart. Vident My Chart. Vident My Chart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidantMyChart.com or call 1 855 MyVident to learn how you can sign up. Why settle for a 2017 model when you can have massive reductions on a 2018 Toyota? It's the introduction reduction at Greenville Toyota. 2018 RAV4s, $179 a month. Plus, get our advantage at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. All right, welcome back. And uh, in our Vida Spotlight today, we have a couple of gentlemen here. We have uh, Russell Allen, who is the director of Vida Wellness Center here in Greenville. There are Vida Wellness Centers in uh, Greenville, Ahoski. Help me, Erica. Where else? Or Washington. Washington. So the three of them. Yes, sir. And you are the uh, you're the director of the uh, big center here in Greenville, which is out on Stantonsburg Road. As you're going out of town, we see that big white building over there. And also with us is J.B. Kane. I'm going to tell you J.B.'s story in a minute. He is a, a member at Vidant Wellness Center, and uh, he has quite a story to tell. But first, let's uh, let's bring in Russell and uh, talk about Vidant Wellness. We uh, talk about. Uh, Vidant Health overall and, and the incredible asset that it is to Eastern North Carolina, but uh, you deal more with the uh, preventive side of having, you, you want to try to keep people out of the big white building <laughs> over there, don't you? We do, and what we like to talk about is the continuum of care. So your continuum of care and wellness can begin before you ever have an injury or an illness. So just preventing, like you just said, Henry, is just preventing that episode from happening. So if you're more healthy, stronger, then we can help prevent that. But in Mr. Kang's case, you know, he came to us at the end of care. So after his body health uh, experience, going into the hospital, having surgery, and then physical therapy, he came to us on the other spectrum of care, which was wellness at the very end of that. Let's talk about that. Uh, J.B. Kane, who lives in Aden, uh, you were a pilot of uh, one of these, uh, let's see if I get it right, a, these power, powered paragliding. Yes, sir. Paragliders? Yes, sir. Power. Powered paraglider. Yes, sir. Uh, and these are the, you know, we've seen these. These are the motorized kind of hang gliders that we see. That looks, like, looks like a parachute wing. Yeah, yeah. And and you had an accident in one. Yes, sir. And I remember that accident because it was pretty well chronicled. Because when you when I see those things, I wonder how dangerous they are. But you uh, you you were the one. You had the accident here in Pitt County back in 2009. Yes, sir. I had made like uh, 54 or 55 flights, and I was pretty confident. And uh, that morning I took off, and it was just like any other morning. I wasn't expecting anything out of the ordinary, and uh, the weather kind of played into it. And uh, you had a crash. Yeah, 162 foot fall. That's what I was going to ask. How how high were you? 162 feet. So was it straight down, or did you glide down? Or it was straight down, and wow. I, I was sitting in uh, the trike that had the motor on the back of it, and uh, it hit the ground so hard that it uh, crushed the vertebrae in my back. Wow. Now I got to ask you, what goes through your mind when you're going down? Because I've often wondered, what would I be thinking? Do you remember? Do you even want to recall? I was sitting there and I realized I was going to die for sure. I was so high up. And uh, the only thing I thought to say was, God, will you help me? 
And uh, the next thing I knew, I woke up and I looked around. And I couldn't believe I was alive. Where did it happen? Where did you land? Or it was on a uh, one eighteen, about uh, a half a mile outside Grifton. Yeah, that's out there near our t our WNCT tower. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you probably used to fly around that tower, didn't you? Oh, I flew over it one time, and I was going to touch the top with my foot. <laughs> oh my lord, really? <laughs> and, uh, and that thing's two thousand feet. Yes, sir. In the air. Yes, sir. Yeah. Were you successful? No, sir. I was, I chickened out last minute. Cause <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. All right, so uh, so you had this horrible accident, and uh, you get taken to Vidant Health, yes, Vidant sir. Medical Center. Yes, sir. And uh, how long were you in the hospital? I went in October 9th, and I uh, walked out of uh, rehab uh, November uh, the day before Thanksgiving. So a year later? No, it was uh, two, just a month later? Two months later. Two months later, really? Wow. Did you have surgery? I guess you did. Yes, sir. You I did. had I had uh, titanium rods and screws put in my back. I'm really surprised you were only there for that length of time. But I guess that kind of leads us to to you, Russell, because we have you know now. So when somebody like uh, JB leaves uh, Vidant Medical Center, uh, he can continue his rehab by coming to Vidant Wellness Center, which is one of the great things about having that facility here. It is. I mean, what what he did first, though, was physical therapy. So he's an outpatient physical therapy. So he mm -hmm. had to stay in the hospital, and that would be considered inpatient physical therapy. Right. So he was doing outpatient physical therapy. He graduates from outpatient. And later on down the road, he makes a decision to do independent exercise to continue his therapy. Right. So uh, did he come to you guys and you de designed a plan for him, or was it just on his own or what? Yes, sir. We Every member that comes to us, whether you're from the community or whether you're uh, coming out of the hospital, or if you're an employee of ours, you know, mm -hmm. we will create a workout plan for every member. So when you come in, we, we set you up with an exercise specialist. Uh, a lot of people refer to them as trainers. I tell you what makes ours different is that all of ours have a four-year bachelor's degree, some mm -hmm. of them with a master's degree. So we basically sit down with people like Mr. Kane and create a workout plan based on his injuries or based on his goals and what he wants to accomplish. Uh, talk about your experience with, uh, with the Wellness Center after you uh, got out of the hospital. Well, I had extensive nerve damage and I have cadaver vertebrae in my backbone. And uh, so I've lost a lot of what I had before. So with all the outpatient therapy I was getting from Vidant and all, when that ended, it was left up to me. And over years and all, I started getting heavier and weaker, and my coordination was not where it was and all. And I saw an ad on uh, the Internet and all about this guy in San Francisco who started going to a gym and doing exercises that he doesn't normally do and how he started regaining things. Mm -hmm. They would wake up the muscles and the nerves, and they would start functioning again. Oh. So that was my incentive to go to buy it mm -hmm. after checking out two or three other gyms that were mom-and-pop kind of right. operations. Right. And, uh, so, so, how, so, so tell me about the experience. Did, did that happen for you? I, uh, I went in with them and all, and uh, they had a trainer set me up. Uh, learned my history, what was going on with me, and they started me out on some machines and all, and I started out doing like 10 pounds lifting on different areas of my body and working out my upper body and lower body. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm up to 100 pounds now on most wow. of the machines. Good for you. And I've lost uh, 35 pounds well, in the process. Good, you look good for a guy who's been what you've been through. That's that's mm -hmm. fantastic. All right, so uh, in, in, you know, it's the time of year – Russell, when uh, you know we're we're gonna all eat like crazy until Sunday, yes. <laughs> then we're gonna wake up Monday morning. And go, oh my God, I gotta join a gym. <laughs> so, uh, so so uh, I know that this is gonna be a busy time of year for you, but y'all have some great deals coming up for the new year. Yes, sir. Uh, what we'll do this January, we haven't done this before, but we'll, we will do uh, Resolution Tuesdays. There's five Tuesdays in January. So anyone who wants to come in and work out and try out the the, the fitness center or the wellness center can come in free on Tuesdays in January. Wow. Good. Good. And it, does that include a Husky? And, does it include and, all three of our locations? And Washington as well. Yes, sir. Okay, good. All right. So how do people learn more? Is there a website? Yes, sir. We have a website, com. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, 
uh, Twitter, so all that social media stuff. So, yeah. Good, good. Well, thank you both for coming in. And uh, Mr. Kane, congratulations on your recovery. What a story. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I take it you haven't been uh, back on the machine since then. No, I sold it on eBay. <laughs> you did sell it. So, yeah. but, but, so it wasn't damaged enough that you couldn't sell it. Yeah, I had uh, some friends and all. They took it while I was in the hospital and refurbished it and got it mm -hmm. back up in A1 condition because I mm -hmm. told them I wanted to sell it. And uh, I got back the money I paid for it. So. Oh, well, good. Well, good. Well, good. <laughs> That's that's a that's a great uh, that's a great ending to a, a tragic story. So yeah. we're we're happy that you're doing so well, and uh, Russell, thank you for coming in. Yes, sir. Good to see you again. Vida Wellness Centers in Greenville, Ahoski, and Washington, and uh, you can learn more about the special New Year's deals coming up by going to the website. Yes, sir. All right, thank you both. Thank you. Thank Good you, to Henry. see you, JB Kane and Russell Allen from Vida Wellness Center. All right, uh, nine minutes now in front of nine. We'll be right back. All 2017 inventory must go here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. This is commercial truck season. Come see our great lineup of Ram commercial vehicles for all your work needs. Check out the Ram 2500, Ram 3500 with cab and chassis, Ram 4500 and 5500. Also Ram Promaster and Ram Promaster City. All 2017 Rams must go during Ram Power Day. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come see us. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. Some pretty incredible things were born in the Carolinas, like barbecue. Born right here, baby. First in flight. Maybe you've heard of it. Mini golf. Boom. And a few of my favorites, the Panthers and Pepsi. Born in the Carolinas. The touchdown dance. Perfected in the Carolinas. My prescription refills. My son shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents care. My chart. Vident My Chart. Vident My Chart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidentMyChart.com or call 1 855 MyVident to learn how you can sign up. Welcome in to the new Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Are you ready to drive a little to save a lot? I'm Rod Emery, General Manager at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Come see us here in Washington for the best deal on a new car, truck, or Jeep and a great sales and service experience. Lease a new Ram Crew Cab truck for just $299 a month and only $299 due at signing during our Drive and Discover event. We're looking forward to seeing you at Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, located on Highway 264 in between Greenville and Washington, or visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com. Talk of the Town, brought to you in part this morning by our friends at Advanced Moving and Storage. For more than 20 years, Advanced Moving and Storage has been serving Eastern Carolina and surrounding areas with your moving and relocation needs. But you may not know that in the same building there on Four Lines Road, they also have the Loose Goose, which is a great spot to do some Christmas shopping the rest of this week. 
The Loose Goose, ha uh, Loose Goose has some great one-of-a-kind gift ideas, and uh, they have uh, some incredible uh, antique opportunities as well. So if you hadn't been there before, check it out this week. It's the Loose Goose at 241 Four Lines Road. Now, here's how you get there. You just turn right off of uh, Memorial Drive onto uh, Four Lines Road, right next to the Harley-Davidson store there in Winterville. You turn and go down just right next to the store, and you'll see the building uh, down on the left. It's, um, it's Advanced Moving and, uh, and Loose Goose are both in the same location there at 241 Four Lines Road. And you can learn more about both at advancedmoversnc.com and loosegooseantiques.com. All right, McGee had a uh, little Christmas gathering to run off to this morning, I believe. So I've got some, uh, I've got some uh, sports headlines. Of course, the big sports headline here in Greenville today is uh, National Signing Day. National Letters of Intent for High School Football Players will be signed today through Friday to formally uh, indicate which university that they will be playing football for the next four years. ECU is expected to sign 19 in all, including uh, their marquee recruit, D.H. Conley quarterback Holton Ehlers, who we are told has already signed his letter this morning, but he's having a signing ceremony today at 1 o'clock at Tiebreakers. If you'd like to meet Holton Ehlers and uh, his dad, Morgan, who's been a friend of of mine for a long, long time. Stop by tiebreakers today. One o'clock. Holton will be uh, doing a little uh, um, ceremonial signing of his ECU letter of intent. Big day for uh, Scotty Montgomery to get uh, to get Holton Aylers on board. The NFL yesterday reduced Thomas Davis's suspension from two games to one for that blindside block on Green Bay Packers receiver Devonte Adams. Uh, Davis will now just miss this weekend's game against the Buccaneers on Sunday, which means he will be eligible to return and play against the Atlanta Falcons in that huge game uh, in Week 17 on New Year's Eve. The Pittsburgh Steelers led all teams with a league best uh, eight selections on the uh, Pro Bowl. Uh, Luke Keekley, the only Panther selected to the Pro Bowl. What's up with that? Pro Bowl will be played January 28th in Orlando. It's worthless anyway. It's just an honor. The game is a joke. Uh, when David Garrard played in that Pro Bowl game, he said that, uh, you know, it wasn't anything but a big party. <laughs> uh, Florida Atlantic demolished Akron 50-3 to last night in the Boca Raton Bowl, and they're saying that uh, the head coach down there, uh, Lane Kiffin, has signed a 10-year deal to stay at Florida Atlantic. That's got to be lucrative. Skip Holtz's Louisiana Tech Bulldogs will play uh, SMU tonight in the uh, DXL Frisco Bowl. So you get a chance to watch former ECU coach Skip Holtz uh, coaching his team, which, of course, is Louisiana Tech tonight in the bowl game. On Tuesday, Connecticut coach uh, Gino Ariumano and North Carolina coach Sylvia Hatchell reached career milestones. Both recorded their 1,000th career victories. So that is our sports update brought to you by the Tire Realty Group and Property Management Team. If you are remotely thinking about selling your home, this is the time to do it because average sales price is up in Pitt County, and it's a great time to sell. Not enough homes on the market, and that means higher prices, and the Tire Realty Group will sell your home quickly. In fact, they'll guarantee that they will sell your home quickly because they give you the 99-day guarantee. If they don't sell it in 99 days, they pay uh, you pay them no commission. They also have their one-day listing contract, which means no penalty to cancel the listing contract at any time. And if you're thinking about changing careers, they're looking for salespeople right now, too. Call the Tire Realty Group. I was in there yesterday saying hello to uh, Homer and the guys, taking them by a little Christmas cheer. Call them at 758-H-O-M-E or visit them online at 99 or free. Dot com. All right, thanks to our guests. Thanks to uh, the folks from Vidant Wellness. Thanks to Governor Pat McCrory for weighing in on what's going on with the Panthers. Everybody uh, stay safe in this uh, weather today, and we'll see you back here in the studio tomorrow.